Hi, thank you so much for joining me. I want to talk about the gas laws in a more qualitative sense, uh, by both graphically as well as motion of molecules. First one I want to talk about is Boyle's Law. This is the mathematical formula for Boyle's Law. P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So here's what I want us to think about. Let's talk about the gas inside the container and then the surroundings outside the container. Now, this is the walls, of, this represents the walls of the container, and volume is a variable, which means volume can either um, increase or volume can decrease. Okay, now what happens with pressure is this, is that the volume is going to either increase or decrease until the pressure inside the container becomes equal to the pressure outside of the container. So we have molecules that are hitting the sides of the container from the outside. We have molecules hitting the container from the inside, and it's going to expand until those are equal. And it's, it's like a bag of chips if you take it on an airplane. So you have your little bag of chips here. I'll just represent it by a little, I'm horrible with drawing, but you have your pressure here pushing outside. Well, if the pressure outside decreases, it's going to cause the volume of the bag to increase until the pressures become equal. So that's why your bag of chips will expand uh, because the pressure outside decreases and so the pressure inside is going to decrease and the volume will increase. Um, until those are equal. Remember, pressure is a force per unit area. Okay, um, I think that's really important. Okay, so if either the force increases or the area decreases, either one of those is going to cause an increase in your pressure. So you want to think about that as you're thinking about the collisions of molecules with the sides of the containers. Right? This is what this would look like. These graphs represent what they would look like. Um, if you graphed pressure and volume, remember this is an indirect relationship. Pressure is proportional to 1 over volume. Common multiple choice question is to show different graphs, um, one of which would be this. And you need to know that only pressure and volume, you could have volume here and pressure on the X, doesn't matter, but it's only between pressure and volume that you're going to see that decreasing curve representing an indirect relationship. Now, if instead we graphed this as the pressure versus one over the volume, now we would get a straight line with an increasing slope. And hopefully you will have an opportunity uh, to do that. Okay, so um, I want to look at this one because I really like the particle diagram here. You see we have a piston, that means the volume can change. It is not, it, it's a flexible container. So what happens is that as the volume decreases, our collisions per unit area, what we see is as the volume decreases, if you can imagine the distance these molecules have to go before they collide also decreases. So you're going to have an increased frequency of collision and that's going to cause an increase in pressure. Okay, More collisions, harder collisions um, are all going to increase the pressure. So let's take a look at our next one. Our next law, Charles's law, states that we have a direct relationship with these. So here's what's going to happen as our temperature increases. 
Remember, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, one half mv squared is kinetic energy. So if our kinetic energy increases, that means the velocity and hence the force of the collisions are going to increase. And now, because our container can increase in volume, instead of the pressure changing, the volume is going to increase, okay, so that our, remember, when we've got this pressure, it's, the volume's going to increase until our pressure in is equal to our pressure out. Okay, so we're not going to change pressure here. What in, we're going to do instead is the volume will increase. Okay, so increase in temperature means increase in kinetic energy, increase of force of the collisions, and frankly, increase in the frequency of those collisions. Okay, sometimes you'll see little arrows on particle diagrams to show, you know, this might be a bigger arrow to show that it's got more kinetic energy. So you notice here that we're graphing temperature, of course, in Kelvin versus our volume. And you notice that our intercept is zero Kelvin. Okay, that's one of the ways that they derived zero Kelvin. And scientists are within like a nano Kelvin of, of reaching zero Kelvin, so it's pretty cool. All right, so that's the kind of the particle diagram. You want to make sure you can interpret particle diagrams. The math makes more sense. I always, uh, I tell my students, the more you can conceptualize, the less you have to memorize. So with Gay-Lussac's law, this states that, again, if my increase in temperature, okay, this time, again, I have my increase of force and of collisions, increase in my frequency of collisions, all right? Now, since my volume is rigid, so a way you know that volume is constant is if it says it's a rigid container. If my volume is rigid, my pressure inside will go up. It will become greater than the external pressure. So my pressure is going to increase. I'll have more collisions. Those particles will collide more often and those collisions will have more force, more energy associated with them. Okay, and therefore the pressure will increase. And that is Gay-Lussac's graph, and you should recognize these graphs. And then Avogadro's law, you won't see it quite as much. Okay, but if you have um, if you increase your moles of gas, you have, you've got more particles, right? So you've got, you're going to increase the collisions per unit area, okay? And since the volume can expand, we will increase our volume until my pressure inside is back to my pressure outside um, if it's flexible and in an atmospheric pressure environment. These are some great questions uh, that you should ponder. Maybe think about answering. Uh, I'm going to go over them with my class. I'm not going to go over them in a video. But I think if you can start to process these types of questions, um, I already, in fact, I already did the potato chip bag for you. And um, I, I think it will help you understand that your, con your concepts at the collision, at the molecular particle level for your gas loss. Now, I do want to point this last one out here. I want you to be really careful because this says that your temperature in Celsius doubles. But I want you to ask yourself, what happens to the temperature in Kelvin? And then I want you to think about that answer. So a little bit of self-learning uh, for you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck with chemistry. For my kiddos, this is your best chemistry teacher signing off.